There's something strange in the neighborhood. Who's gonna call? Yeah, you know this song, you know this. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're back with Ghostbusters. With Ghostbusters Junior 2. Or better known as Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Okay, so first off, uh, you might be noticing uh, this VHS. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I want to apologize if the video comes out with you hearing some uh, some noises coming out. Is that? It's because right now I am capturing some uh, some video footage footage from my old VHS, and well, also this VCR is not. It's it, it's not mine. It's it's from the library. I I I, uh, I got it borrowed, and I only have a few days in, in before I give it back and take it. So I'm taking advantage of it. So I want to apologize if you hear some kind of nose into it. But in the meantime, uh, we go uh, we go from that one very nostalgic uh, hardware to a movie that is. Well, not just movie, a franchise that is overly reliant on nostalgia. And, and like I said, it's Ghostbusters. And it's the sequel of a movie that I am not very fond of. Uh, I, I did tell my, uh, my thoughts about it on the last vlog where I talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife or I, I call it Ghostbusters Jr. considering the, the, the type of cast that they were going to. And, well, here's, a, here's kind of like a quick recap of the whole thing. Uh, I'll, give it my, I'll give it my best to make it quick. Uh, Ghostbusters 1, it still holds up, uh, although, although I think that a little bit of fandom is a little bit too much. Uh, Ghostbusters 2, it was okay. The last time I saw it was a few years and some things, uh, it was kind of like a little bit better than the people say. Uh, I still like the, kind of like the Statue of Liberty thing. Uh, Ghostbusters, uh, Ghostbusters 3, or the video game, it, it was a fun game. Uh, you can tell that there was some passion involved from the, from the creator of that. Even to this day, fans still kind of find it canonical. And, of course, let's go with the elephant in the room, uh, Ghostbusters, mm, oh, no, no, before that, the animated series. Uh, the animated series, uh, some things doesn't hold up, although I did like, I do like this first season, I can't deny that it was a Saturday morning staple during those time and t uh, few days, but unfortunately it didn't age well because of the, uh, uh, because the, the from the second season and above, they uh, they, uh, they have uh, these uh, this league of writers that they ruined the whole thing by all those awful changes and also pushing uh, pushing Slimer was also a big mistake. I kind of tolerated it when I was a kid, but I, I don't think that Slimer aged very well and. I don't know why I still consider a fan favorite. I, I think it's mostly the corporate favorite because it's the most marketable of them all. And now I'm back in business with the movies. Uh, Ghostbusters 2016, of course, the biggest elephant in the room in which it not only kickstarted the whole problem of Hollywood, but uh, 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 but it was also a, it was a pretty awful movie. Uh, 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 I mean, there were some bold things here and there if I wanted to make it fair, but let's not. But of course, it was pretty unfunny, pretty mean spirited. It was, it was a lot of things going in the wrong direction. I have almost like no love to Ghostbusters Afterlife slash the Ghostbusters Junior, and it's mostly because. Uh, I, 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 while I was kind of like very generous on, on the first vlog, the more I on hint, I gave some hints about this movie, I found it mean spirited, not, not mean spirited, I found it disrespectful to Harold Ramis. Uh, uh, the new character suck. He was over reliant on, on the, on nostalgia. You could tell that it was a, it was a franchise that it can't stand up on its own two feet. And, and of course, it was, 
and, and of course, uh, bringing Gother as the main antagonist was a horrible mistake, and I hated that. Oh, oh yeah, I, for, I almost forgot that. The more I think about it, those two things, it makes the other animated series a better sequel compared to the other ones. Yeah, I'm talking about Ghostbusters Extreme, in which uh, people kind of tend to forget it, even myself, but in hindsight, I think Ghostbusters Extreme was, is better. It was the better sequel compared to, well, Junior slash Afterlife, and, or, I gotta say, 2016. Uh, uh, Alright, uh, but that's just me, I don't think. That was my quick recap on my stance to Ghostbuster, to Ghostbusters in general. So as you can tell, from, from the trailers, I wasn't exactly very keen uh, 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 when I saw the trailer of, of Frozen Empire. Because I, there was some... Uh, uh, there were some things that I found some potential, but uh, but that also means that I had to go back with the same cast of uh, uh, of a uh, very bland, forgettable characters from the uh, from the last movie, and I and I did mention that I do have some problems with that. Um, also, I know that many people kind of ate it. They 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 were really. Uh, there, uh, I think that it, it was mostly supported because the the fans are they really eat it up and they and they uh, and the problem that I have with the Ghostbuster fans is that they are always kind of like very dependent on the nostalgia factor, uh, and they're not very critical enough on on the whole thing, uh, and, and I think this is the reason why the afterlife was seen very good. Like saying, oh, it looks so good, uh, but uh, unfortunately they. I think that they did a huge disrespect to Harold Ramis, making him, you know, CGI and all this stuff. And, and although uh, that's kind of like a big can of worms that is debatable. Uh, it, it's almost like it, it's almost like AI. It, it, so I'm not gonna go too much into discussion because this is kind of getting too big. Uh, but the point is that I I was kind of like. Not so very hopeful uh, with Ghostbuster Frozen Empire, but that uh, but considering that uh, that lately I had a string of bad movies. I mean, look at this. I came from I came for three consecutive bad movies. Uh, there is uh, actually four. Actually four, although I didn't make a vlog about it yet. I think I'm gonna release it later because I, I was kind of busy slash lazy about it. But but it, but considering the three consecutive movies that that, that were pretty bad for me, there were uh, uh, Madame Web, and then Imaginary, and then the the American Society on uh, Magical. I'm not gonna say the word in, in this vlog. I'll leave it on the other on the other one. Uh, uh, at least, I I was kind of like crossing my fingers that probably this movie will have been kind of like the better of the bunch, I'll say. And well, I finally finished watching it, and okay, considering from what I had on, on experience, I can say that yeah, it was kind of like a slightly improvement on the experience. But that's not saying much. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire kind of stink. It wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good movie. Although, that, although I can't, I'm not gonna say that it was pretty bad, but, um, but this movie has a lot of problems that it made, that I can't help it but saying that this is mostly a movie that it was made with bad decisions, bad, uh, some bad cinematographic stuff, bad, uh, bad scenes, bad focus. It was mostly a misled movie, but it wasn't horrible. If I want to be kind of like generous, in the grading level, I might put it that, that it was below average. Or average at best. Not, I, I not. Uh, there is a sense of entertainment that I am gonna give it credit, but 
I I gotta give it a little bit of cold shoulder and and be and be more honest on the big mistakes that this movie has because this one it will make the it will it kind of it, it, it gonna diminish the whole thing and in comparing to the last one I I I, I that kind of makes it a little bit worse in execution at least it, it I, I although not exactly by a margin because well it doesn't go Ghostbusters 2016 man that is gonna be kind of like a bar and on it and this is the problem is that I think that despite this movie's problems a lot of fans, they're not, they're gonna brush it up by saying that, Oh well, I was entertained, it was funny, at least it wasn't Ghostbusters 2016. Uh, dude, I know, but still it doesn't, it doesn't help much. Especially from a movie that it, I see that there is the potential, but it's more by not just the problems that I'm gonna say, but, but also it has, still has the big, the big crust that the other movie has. And and, the, and it has the same problem that it's still overly reliant on the on the original on the original stuff. The from, it, so it's overly reliant on, on nostalgia. I, I don't I don't mind nostalgia, but don't rely on it too much uh, because then then you you feel like you. You, you can't stand on its two on its own two feet. I hate to say this, but I think Ghostbuster 2016 at least had an idea that, uh, of wanting to become its own thing. Of course, it fails in almost every single level, but at least it tried to be its own thing, uh, and 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 not and not the after like Junior did. It it was so much that I even want to scratch the word Junior for something else. You'll see why. Right now, let me talk about the movie. So the movie takes place two years ago. Uh, if you remember, the whole thing is about the Spangler family. Uh, we got we got, of course, uh, Egon's granddaughter Phoebe, played by McKenna Craze, uh, the uh, the mother Carrie Coon, uh, the the brother uh, Trevor Trevor, played by Finn Wolhart, and of course the and of course now uh, the mother is now married to uh, to the, to the uh, to the teacher of the last movie, played by Paul Rudd. And and of course we got the other cat. Yeah, we got of course the other cat character. Well, I'll get to it. And guess what? The whole family, they moved to New York. Now it doesn't take place in Oklahoma. They go they go to New York, uh, building the the Ghostbust the Ghostbuster franchise, and they even bought the the old Ghostbusters house because heaven forbid uh, we got this piece of nostalgia there. So yeah, they got the they got the house. I don't know how they're gonna afford this big fireplace, this big old fire firehouse. When in the last movie they live in a barn, and also why would you take the the what would you take the business of the person that you hate? I'm talking to the to, you know the mother. Uh, she, she technically hated her, her. She technically hated her father. Uh, uh, because, you know, issues. This is one thing that I hated about the movie, is that is how much of a disservice they made to Egon. Because it's te technically the typical, you know, uh, you know, revival of franchise in which everyone, when they grow up, they're gonna be get crummy, isolated, angry, and something bad is gonna happen. Oh, oh, my, oh my. And that was a total disservice to the, to the Egon Spangler character. And, and of course they go, you know, with the family members taking the brunt of the whole thing, and, and that was technically a mean spirited thing. And and I know that probably it comes into term, in, you know, in the last movie, but still there were some things that it didn't hold up with that. And and, and how can I 
And by the way, yeah, like I was saying, uh, they got this, they're building the Ghostbuster uh, business, and yeah, they have the, uh, they keep, they chase ghosts, like for example, the sewer dragon, and uh, and it causes collateral damage, which of course calls, calls the attention of the, ma of the mayor of the city. And that mayor is none other than the classic character, Walter Peck. Yep, they brought the, what was the name of the guy? Uh, William Atherton. They brought they brought him back, uh, you know, because of nostalgia. They brought him back, and, Ma and Major Diglis, they missed the opportunity to say this. Hey, he's, ang he's angry because he, he still doesn't like the Ghostbusters, despite that they saved the, uh, they saved the world, take, uh, well, was it three times or some other times, if you want to count either the animated movie or the video game. He's still angry at them, but, you know, like in the other movie, uh, people will say that, well, he's an asshole, but still he has a point. No exception in this one. He's angry because, not only because of the collateral damage, but also because of the child labor, because, well, well Phoebe Spangler is 15, and she is, she is on a, she's doing a job that is technically very, very dangerous. Which is something that a lot of people they 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 overlook, considering that they are children, and you know what? They always want to go with the young. This is the problem when you when you uh, when you make it uh, make it their franchise very family friendly. And and and. And well, then Phoebe gets, you know, her own problem of angsty and all this stuff she gets that, in which there's a lot of problems that it gets convoluted. But the main crux of the movie is that Ray, uh, uh, Ray receives from, the, uh, from this Hindu guy, which I'll get to, uh, he, re he receives this, uh, kind of like this orb in which it apparently it's a mystical item that it caused, pro that caused a lot of problem and it, it, it it throws people to death, and is showcasing, uh, and is showcasing kind of like something evil in it. So, so the team has to investigate what's in it, trying to decipher what is going on. But little that they know is that that same manifest, evil manifestation is waiting to be released and cause some, uh, some, uh, some really frozen evil that it it uh, that. It has the the purpose to no the it has the motivation to release itself, call itself an army of girls, and freeze it, freeze the world, test the title of Frozen Empire. It, like I and honestly, I could see some potential in that because because considering the villain, at least I'll give it credit that they they did get creative on create on making a. Uh, a new villain. In this case, the villain is called Karaka, and and it is a creative villain, in which they should have done that in uh, in the last movie instead of of using Gozer. Like uh, like I said, in the last movie they re reused Gozer, and I think that that uh, bringing back Gozer was the worst mistake that they, that they made. It was it was. Awful, horrible mistake. And thank good, and thank goodness that they didn't bring Vigo again. I was actually afraid that the next movie they're gonna bring, they're gonna bring back Vigo because they they, they, they aren't creative enough. But even though that I say that they made a new villain, that actually I, I I I actually give credit to that. That's not saying much about the about the movie's execution, considering that. A lot of things with it, it. It feels like it has a lot of things. They wanted to com accomplish a lot, but it 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 was very focused on bringing up nostalgia, because they wanted to appease the fans. Ah, come on, your fans is not the only audience. I mean, one, one, two or three, two or three fan service is good enough, but you, you this one is still over reliant on that. And, and, and this is kind of like the same thing problem that I have with with the last uh, with the last movie. Uh, now let's go a little bit with the actors with the, and the characters. And 
here comes kind of like my big one, my biggest problem. And I also have my, my, that one I also have an issue with the last movie. And that is McKenna Gray, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe Spangler character. She is, I don't, I didn't like her in the first movie. I, I mean, she's well acted, I'll give it that. She's well acted, but, uh, but I, I wasn't even, I didn't like much of the character because I found her bland, unfunny, try hard, and and this is a character that is over-reliant that she is, uh, that she is Egon Spangler's uh, granddaughter. And that's the only thing that you have, you, you, you have with this character. She's just that. Um, she's a, yeah, apparently a medium as far as I can remember, but there's nothing that, especially because this character is basically very reserved on an emotional level that yeah I know Ghostbusters kind of like this chill humor and all this stuff but she wasn't funny and she and she wasn't funny um although I've seen worse I've seen worse cases uh, but I but she I didn't feel kind of like connected to this character I think that she was yeah she was kind of like a forced yeah, force for insert character uh, and I think that at least uh, in this fan in this fan film uh, of Ghostbusters, in which they made a guy who is kind of like the nephew of Egon Spengler, it, it, that, at least that character doesn't feel like it is leaving up the crux of being of of being uh, related to being a family member of that. But this is uh, but. But Phoebe is kind of like, this is all what she got. She's kind of like a genius, a doppelganger of Egon. Uh, it, it's almost like she's just, she just a doppelganger of Egon and not kind of like her own character. And you know what? In this movie, she's a little bit worse. She's a little bit worse because uh, almost during the whole movie, they wanted to build it up that she's the center of the universe. Phoebe this, Phoebe that, Phoebe this, Phoebe that. She's so special. She's uh, she's all over the world. She is the world. Apparently, the movie feels so enamored about her that it feels like the world revolves all around her, and it gets annoying to the point that the character doesn't feel like it grows up. And for the most of the movie, she's just an entitled, uh, entitled precocious brat. In, it's a character that feels entitled, and it's although not exactly the mean spirited way, but that's how I felt with that character. It's a character that thinks that everything should be in her way, and you know what? It gets her way. Everything gets her way. She is just an she she just became a very entitled character, and and it gets annoying, especially because. Because they wanted to concentrate on this character and they make her so special, it misses the point and it misses the camaraderie of the other characters. The other characters then begin to lose, lose focus and it doesn't feel like a team effort. At least, I, I mean, in the other, the, the, the other movies and, and the other moments, they, uh, the whole thing feels like a team effort. But in this case, and I think also in a lesser in a lesser case, the last movie, it doesn't. It feels like everything is revolving around her. And well, I know that it, this is something that is it, it kind of like a crux of a main character. But this, unfortunately, this is it, this is where a lot of things can lose steam because this is not this is supposed to be Ghostbusters, not the Phoebe the Phoebe Spangler movie. And you know what? This is where I wanted to get to. I don't want. I don't want it to. Fro Instead of Ghostbuster Frozen Empire, I scratch it. Ghostbusters Junior. You know what? Scratch it. It's Ghostbusters the Phoebe Spangler movie. This is how I felt. And even her arc, or her or the many arcs that they wanted to add that character, uh, doesn't add up. And, and this and like I say, it overshadowed the uh, kind of like the other characters. Like, like, uh, like Harry Coon, like uh, uh, the mother. She just kind of there, kind of like a nagging mother, and doesn't do much. Uh, Gary Gruberson, which is which is played by Paul Rudd again. 
Paul Rudd is still kind of like the awkward, awkward guy from the last movie, making, you know, try hard jokes, and which is only backed down by his charisma, but unfortunately, there are some moments in which it falls flat, especially in the cringy moment that you see in the trailer when he tries to sing the, uh, uh, there's something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? You know, the, the, like the go, uh, like the, like the Ray Parker song. Uh, it's just cringy. It, it, that was cringy, and, and most, and he kind of, I mean, wanted to have an arc with Bibi in which she doesn't see him, you know, as the stepfather, and uh, when he was trying his best, he, it, 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 it kind of brushed it off because they wanted, they had so other things, and, and, and that, those moments doesn't feel solidified. Oh yeah, and Finn Wolfhard, you could easily take him out of the movie and doesn't affect. They wanted to build him like he is, uh, that he has this problem with Slimer, because he finds Slimer. Uh, yeah, Slimer is there, because of nostalgia, and you know what? That's an effect. Oh yeah, the other characters appear, uh, like Celestia O'Connor as, Luck as, as Lucky, you know, the film go uh love interest from the last movie. Uh, she has a new hair, um, she's just there. She doesn't, she doesn't contribute too much to the movie. Oh yeah, and the kid, Logan Kim, as, as the kid known as Podcast. Uh, they really diminish him uh, on this movie, uh, mostly kind of like this, like the kid doing, get, doing a side gig uh, with, Dan, uh, with Ray, you know, play, but, uh, uh, but, I, I, but and it's a shame because this kid, I will say that he was probably my favorite character from the last movie, mostly because he, he had the energy and, and the, he had the energy from uh, as a standalone character. And it, because of all the bland characters, he was the only one to stand out. He was the only one who comes out as being funny and actually captured the charisma that they uh, that that well almost nobody had. Except for Paul Rudd. Uh, Paul Rudd has a little bit of charisma. Uh, and it's so that's technically kind of like the, uh, the supposed main cast of the Ghostbusters. And you can tell that this movie also can't stand on his tone two feet because, well, they brought back the old cast from Ghostbusters. Yeah, because because they can do anything on their own and they have to rely on the charisma of the, of the old cast. Like I said, uh, the return of Walter Peck, uh, 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 Walter Peck, uh, William Ad Adgerton, uh, I always forget the name of this guy. Uh, he, uh, like, I, like I said, he's the mayor, he's still angry with the Ghostbuster uh, for good and bad reasons. You can, say, you can debate whatever he wants, but, well, he's kind of just there. Like I said, Dan Aykroyd does, uh, does uh, also appear, and he's still, you know, on... Uh, you know, looking for paranormal stuff, selling and all that, and, and all that, and he just wants he just wants to feel, you know, rip the light, you know, the Ghostbuster glory. And we also have Ernie Hudson back as, as Winston. He made his own, he, he made his own company of Ghostbusters engineering, finding kind of like an al alternative to the containment containment unit. And, and well, is Ernie Hudson? Ernie Hudson was always a charming a charming actor, and. And they pull it up. Uh, even Dan Aykroyd does that. Oh yeah, Annie Potts also returns at Janice. Uh, she's there. Uh, she's uh, you know using that yeah, there for the uh, for the uh, for the small roles that she has. If, uh, also, she's kind of blurred out, kind of like a, the hypocrisy of that movie uh, by saying that we bought the uh, they bought the fire department not for nostalgia reasons. Ha ha ha! Yeah, right. Uh, and, oh yeah, and they also brought back. Uh, Bill Murray also, Peter Bankman, and uh, he also appears there. And I'm, and you know what? I don't want to be mean spirited to Bill Murray, but it's funny to see that all of the returning cast, the original cast, they they look uh, they look like they aged well. But poor Bill Murray, he didn't age well uh, physically. Uh, he's kind of looking the most older than the other ones. I don't know if they're kind of like the same age or Bill Murray is the oldest, but uh, but that was kind of like a weird stray observation. Uh, 
uh, but you know, they're there. They're making their own charming stuff. Also, they wanted to make kind of like a side story in which Ray and Winston, uh, they kind of debate that they're that they have to leave the uh, you know everything behind because they're in the golden years. Uh, you know, all people are reminiscent of the of the good good old times. <sighs> That could have been another movie in itself, but they had to cram it on, you know. I, I already did, they already did that better on Ghostbusters Extreme. Also, there, uh, there's, a, there's also three other, uh, oh, there's other few other characters, like Pat and Oswald playing uh, this, uh, uh, as this assistant on, on Winston's place. And uh, it was kind of like fine, I'll say that. Uh, Kumail Nanjiani plays this, uh, kind of like the comic relief name Nadim. He's the one who sells out the, 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 Mar the magical MacGuffin to, uh, to Ray. And, and the way this guy acts when he appears on screen, it almost feels like it is kind of like another world. Because you know that Ghostbusters is well known for his witty, sl sl uh, yet dry humor. But this guy, he comes up a little bit kind of like in, in, in from a Disney Channel sitcom. Or, or okay, maybe that's a little bit more insulting. Maybe he comes more kind of like a AB, uh, or ABC or CBS sitcom in, in the level of awkwardness. It, 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 he uh, he kind of reminds me of George Lopez for some reason, even though, even though he's Hindu. Uh, and and they wanted to build up that he is kind of like someone important, but unfortunately that wasn't cooked enough because they wanted to make BB special. And then I got to the other character, a character played by Emily Aline Lind, who plays this ghost named Melody. I might say that she's probably the worst actress in the whole movie. I don't blame her. I'm probably the direction or what they wanted to say, but this is, it, it comes like a ghost that is, I don't know if they wanted to make her kind of like gods or something like that, but she's barely emotional. She, it, I mean, she's a ghost, but apparently when she died, she, that her emotion died as well. And, and I didn't feel with that character, especially how undercooked they wanted to build this character in which, in which they wanted her to have kind of like a relation with, uh, with BB. And, but you know what, for some reason, every time these two characters were appear on screen, in my mind, I was like, all right, all right, I know where you're going, kiss already. I know you want to, I know you want to kiss. I didn't. I don't mean to do that, but that's the thing that came out into my head, especially considering you know the whole uh, where Hollywood is pushing through with these kind of with these kind of things. I mean, look at Disney. I mean, I mean maybe it's because I saw the trailer of Inside Out two uh, 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 during during the screening, and I re I really call smell. Uh, uh, homosexuality themes in, in Inside Out 2. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it wasn't intentional, but it kind of feels like that, especially the directions that Disney is going through. Also, that's not Disney, it's Columbia Pictures. Oh my god, Columbia Pictures is now celebrating its 100 years. And, uh, and the funny thing is that the, that celebration, it started out with Man and Whip. I forgot to mention that bit on, on, on my Madam Web vlog, and and now it is on this one. Is that the best you got? Uh, yeah, there's more to the uh, with the Melody character, but uh, but this is that character that it, uh, there was. Uh, if they could concentrate a little bit better on that character, maybe uh, maybe I could be a little bit more forgiving. And of course, we got the villain Caracol. No, Caraca, Caraca. I think it was Caraca. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna. Like I said, I like that they go for for a creative ghost, and I'm not gonna lie. I did like the design, and it has an awesome lore, and and also uh, I like that they 
they didn't pull back on on the threat levels of this of this villain. It, it is a villain that that it has kind of like ice powers, although not exactly. Well, it is ice, but they do explain that this is a monster that it can it, it can it can pull. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't remember how to say. It, but it, apparently, it can bring out the, the, the your greatest fears, and it you and and it, the greatest fears it it chills them. It chills them to the, uh, to the bone, uh, literally freezing them. And it's shown during the prologue about how deadly that that monster can be. And I like that. Even the lore is probably the best part that that, that this guy has. And again, it's a creative ghost. Um, unfortunately, is he's kind of like Bob Mar with some inconsistencies. The inconsistencies about how much power powerful this guy has. It's almost like they they forgot to give this guy a limit. And they made it. I mean, it has kind of not only it has the ice powers. But it also has the, you know, the presence that it can mind control a uh, ghost. And of course, it, and of course, it apparently it's all of convenience. Some of the, some of those ghosts that are controlled are convenience. Uh, like, for, uh, like, for example, uh, I don't, I, you know what, I don't care if I spoil it. He tries to control, he, he, he controls the, you can see how it mind controls other ghosts, like the return of those little Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Yeah, the return from the last movie. Yeah, nothing much to say because they they can't make a movie without the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And of course, uh, another notable ghost that they possess is kind of like this red tint, which they call it the Possessor. Which is basically a poltergeist. It it kind of like a red dot that possesses uh, stuff and it controls them. Uh, but it feels like they, you know they, they control them, being loyal to the guy. But heaven forbid, the character named Melody, who is uh, who is uh, who is the another ghost, she doesn't get mind control. She's basically kind of becomes kind of like the backstabber of the mo of the movie. Uh, but she's kind of like second uh, second thought. So there is, a, a, it kind of feels convenient who mind controls and who doesn't. Or uh, uh, so, so there is, it, it kind of comes inconsistent. And also, I feel like the presence doesn't have kind of like a radius. It, it sometimes it is, sometimes it is, in, in you know where the orb is, but sometimes it goes even far away from other things that it even affect you know the how. Uh, the the uh, the firehouse. I, I'm almost like, I'm almost like, it has almost like no control or no limit of the radius of the whole of the whole thing. Uh, it it kind of forgets to, kind of to explain that. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much I have to say. Let's go talk about the cinematography, which is not badly shot. Although there are some moments in which uh, the special effects uh, can be relying a little bit on CGI. Although, they, although there are some practical effects that I can appreciate. Although the Slimer obviously is, is, is uh, you can see the practical effects. I think that's kind of like the only ghost that is practical. The, st the state puffs are, are uh, you know, CGI. The, uh, the possessor is kind of like just a red dot. Uh, I don't know how much practical the, uh, Car uh, Caraca is. Um, uh, although I did like kind of like the design, even though kind of like the ice power they come from uh, from looking cool, no pun intended. To it kind of have an abusive way of using a lot of icicles. It has. A, I, I shouldn't be complaining about that, but it's it's just. Uh, but the, the amount of icicles that they use is outstanding, is amazing. But unfortunately, uh, some things about the house, the, how ice works, it feels inconsistent uh, considering that they they go down a little bit with cartoon logic. For example, 
one thing that I'll, that basically question is that there, in the prologue, uh, firefighters they go to to uh, to this house, and and they find a lock a uh, closed door. One of them he puts his hand on the door and he feels like it is cold, but then. Uh, but then the ice effects happen, and he gets his hands froze, fr fr frozenly, frozen stuck. Uh, and and then I don't know what comes into their mind, but then everyone begins to uh, begins to pull him out, and 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 honestly, in my mind, that shall hurt, and your skin will be uh, uh, will have kind of like uh, like red splinters and frostbite, frostbiting, and uh, a bit of skin peel off. I mean, I mean, it's not a ple it's not a pleasant thing. Try, try yourself, you know, with uh, when you you know when you uh, when people say that you put your your tongue on on a on a frozen stick, it gets stuck and you don't have to pull it out because it it, it will hurt it will it'll make the thing worse. And, uh, you have uh, you have to go with other mechanism. Uh, one of them putting some hot water because. I just not pleasant, but of course, since they wanted to make it family friendly, they, they, they treat that like a mild inconvenience. Same happened with, with the assistant, in which he grabs the he grabs the the, the, the golden the, the not golden the metal breast MacGuffin. And then he just he uh, he get his hand gets stuck frozen uh, he gets frozen in it. He tries to th thaw it out, and then he finally throws it with all his force. And apparently, then the, during the whole movie, he has an armband on the whole arm, and not in his hand. Well, it's fine. Uh, I don't know how he dislocated his arm when his hand is the one that needed more treatment. And 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 of course comes the climax, in which of course is when all hell breaks loose, and. And it sometimes makes me wonder how much the fatalities happen because of the whole thing. Because New York basically kind of turns into uh, into the day after tomorrow. Uh, the day I think it was called the day after tomorrow. Uh, when uh, I haven't seen the movie, but I know, but I seen you know the poster where everything is frozen. It almost reached the ice age, and consi and and considering that the, apparently the movie takes place in summer, and there were people in Coney Island in some in some in summer garbs. Uh, how many how many of those people died of pneumonia or frostbite? Uh, or or in the case of uh, you, even if you see in a trailer in being impaled uh, by icicles. Man, I'm over you know what I shouldn't overthink too much about that but uh, uh, but okay let's go with that. And and speaking of that overthinking, this is also kind of like the humor in which uh, it's go, it, the humor goes hit or miss. I already talked to you about how cringe uh, that, uh, that that nostalgia joke came out. And the other characters, of course, they are as um, funny as it is. Although there, although there were some moments that I kind of give it a chuckle or two. Uh, although more it was about the charm of the original cast instead of the other ones because the other ones they are trying so hard that it's kind of lame. I get Paul Rudd kind of kind of tries and honestly Logan Kim, uh, the kid uh, from pod who's known as podcast, is the kind of like the only one who still gives out some energy. A little bit diminished from the last one because he grew older, but still, uh, uh, but still he kind of gives out the energy. Uh, 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 yeah, there were some moments that it, it, it kind of get a little bit ridiculous and kind of like meh -heh -heh or something like that, or sometimes true try hard, uh, try hard. It, they try so hard to imitate the the, the charm of their last movie. Of the for the last movie, you need to to be charming, but also know have more experience with uh, improv and all this stuff. Probably, I will say that the funniest moment of the movie, at least in my opinion, is. When uh, when Dickman is is having this psychological interview with the Nadim character, and, and and he finds out that well he has something special, 
and he just he just throw it out pen, uh, pen, uh, pens at him to see a reaction. That uh, that's kind of like the, mo the probably the biggest moment that I gave me a good laugh. But uh, but other times um, that's pretty much I have to say. And now let me talk. And I think it is time to talk about the theme of the whole movie, which this is. This is also accompanied a little bit with the inconsistencies of the of how this movie was shot, how the movie was cooked, and because, my God, this is one they tried so much, but yet it feels it 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 doesn't feel set. You get uh, it, and I and I I hate to say it because I know that there was some potential into it, but still they want they wanted to. It, it had the problem that it wanted to rely on nostalgia, and they want uh, it, they want to uh, the other uh, audience to you know feel like Phoebe is the world. Phoebe is the is, uh, they wanted to make Phoebe the Ghostbuster instead of you know having the whole team uh, doing special things. Although considering the blindness of all of them, I don't know. But Phoebe is almost like everything, and she does a lot of things that it got me in the wrong this in the wrong thing. Let's, let me try to go out with the whole plot point that they wanted to do. Number one, like I said, she it, she became a very entitled brat. Not in a mean-spirited, annoying way, but it, the whole the whole focus is kind of gets annoying. She just it, she just begins to it, the whole almost during the movie she's angry be, uh, be, uh, because of the uh, after the warning of Walter Peck. She basically is not allowed to go with with the other family members to hunt ghosts, uh, and her anger is almost similar when you have a fifteen year old who is not allowed to uh, uh, to ride a car. It, 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 that's uh, that's uh, that's the thing, and she's kind of like she's like pouting like, but I'm the genius. I'm special. I'm the special. She doesn't say it as specifically like that, but you can tell that in her face and. I know that they can build that a movie, uh, uh, kind of basically like that when you have a, you know, a character growing up to, uh, kind of, kind of like coming of age. That there are some things that it can or can't do. I wouldn't have minded, but unfortunately, that movie doesn't build up to that, and they just want and they just shoehorn how much special she is. Especially when later the family, they just kind of began to condescend her by, by saying that, oh, you're the heart of it. You're the genius. You know everything. You know how to do that. You know how to do that. And you know how to, uh, you're, uh, can you please do that? It's almost like she does everything, but they don't want her to do anything. And, and, and the, uh, uh, so that's kind of like in that. Then, uh, 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 then, uh, and it and there were moments that she really shows some moments of immaturity, but she uh, but they don't go with that. Uh, uh, like for example, uh, there are also kind of like dumb moments, in in which uh, in which she doesn't she doesn't even get uh, get consequences. Uh, like for example, when the family's gone, she gets a call from this restaurant, and she and Papka decide you know to go behind their parents' back, in, in order to ghost hunt. And funnily enough, the, the restaurant owners, they don't question why there is a 15-year-old child, you know, taking, taking the job. And they were like, go ahead. And guess what? It was, it was the Melody character as a ghost. And, and she met them before. And, and, and this character, being a genius or, or being an unemotional genius, instead of saying, hey, I know you. I saw you on the chest, and and kind of have the opportunity to get a conversation uh, without any any without anything happen. You know what she do? She fires her proton pack, cost uh, no question asked, and and it smashes and it smashes the restaurant's uh, uh, glass, the window, and then we got the next scene in which in which these two uh, and with the melody character and uh, meets the Phoebe, and guess what? No, no consequence. No question asked. She doesn't even say, "Why did you shoot me?" Or not even a scene in which, in which the restaurant call the call uh, call uh, call the service of the ghost factory and saying that, "Hey, you broke this this girl. She broke a window. How, this is gonna cost you like two hundred dollars or something like that." No, it doesn't happen. Even in the original. 
the, the, the original cast of Ghostbusters, uh, they, uh, they caused destruction on a hotel and they had to get away with it by blackmail. So, uh, so, no consequences for this girl because she's special. <sighs> then, they wanted to also shoehorn in that Phoebe is having problems with Paul Rudd because because apparently because the parents scold her, the, the, parent, the mother and stepfather scold her because they're trying to be the parent because uh, they're trying to be parents. And she gets angry and especially with Paul Rudd because I'm not, you're not my father. You're not my father. You're my stepfather. And she had problems with that. And guess what? That plot point almost inconsistent. Doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't get fleshed out. It's almost like it, they just did it for the sake of, of being of the sake of that. It's, uh, it gets annoying, it gets annoying, and you, you see that it is all about her. It is kind of like all about her. And by the way, this also com com combined because the parent, the parents begin to say that we're doing this so you're going to keep yourself safe. I mean, no, no, it doesn't. First of all, that is something that you should have seen in the first movie. You have seen the equipment, the equipment is dangerous, and, but also you're the guy you're the guy who still have her uh, being in the Ecto-1 uh, 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 with having that, uh, 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 with that chair and doing, you know, all that dangerous stuff. And you call that dangerous. And the movie doesn't show exactly that. But it could have been better if Phoebe gets injured. Uh, and, and, but no, there's no sign that she gets injured. I think the injury should have uh, the injury from uh, from the Patton Oswalt character. I think it should have been more on. Uh, uh, I think it should have been more. How can I say on uh, 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 on that guy uh, 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 on Phoebe than that guy. You know what? Now that I think about it, I don't think that was Patton Oswalt. The, 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 the how can I say the uh, the assistant? Uh, if I'm wrong, let me know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but either way, uh, the whole uh, thinking that, oh, it's for, uh, I don't want you to get hurt, it's for your own security and all that stuff, it doesn't show that. And then we got, of course, that BB, again with the BB, with the relationship with Melody, in which, uh, in which they wanted to showcase, like, for example, there was a, the, the, uh, the movie opened its can of worm by, uh, by having, you know, questions like saying that, hey, how does it feel being a ghost? She asked that to Ray, to Ray. It, it, and it just comes out of nowhere, and it does. It doesn't. It doesn't contribute too much for the movie. It just wanted to, you know, say that okay, Melody is having some grief because she was killed when she was young uh, because of a fire, and well, she just mm, and and well, she uh, the uh, the main bad guy is technically using her, and even though it comes for a moment in which the ghosts kind of say that I need her. And you know what? It doesn't feel like it needs just Phoebe. Why? Because apparently the ghost could only be released by an inc uh, by chanting an incantation. This is why kind of like the library scene comes out. Uh, uh, the library scene comes out where she, uh, where they're trying to get this phonogram, in which that's what the uh, that's what the uh, the, the that. That society, that society who got a hold of the orb got it. And, and Phoebe wasn't even needed. Why? Because, well, apparently it needed to be kind of like a ghost because the, 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 the monster needed, go and needed a ghost or something like that. And it, it, it didn't need a Phoebe. Maybe it could have to use Melody for, or, you know, for the incantation. But it does, but there's this inconsistent about that. But, but to get that, for a genius, Phoebe makes the stupidest thing this uh, she has ever done, and probably one of the stupidest moments that this movie has. And that is that I don't care if I spoil. Here's the thing: in uh, in in the new company that uh, that Winston does, they they make kind of like this new containment unit in which every captured ghost or uh, kind of possessed item, they put it on this chamber chamber. And it, it sucks out the soul or, or, or the ghost in it, and it, it kind of just to digitize them and kind of go into a new plane or something like that. 
it was never, it was almost never fleshed out in, in, in a bit in which apparently the, the movie decided to write itself a rule in which Phoebe said that, oh, I want to see my, uh, uh, I want to, I, I feel sad, so I want to be with, Mel with Melody. So, you know what? I am, uh, 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 she made a stupid decision uh, in which she decides that I want to see how a ghost feels like. So, I'm going to get myself into the containment unit. So, I, so it's going to suck my soul. Don't worry, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be a ghost for two minutes. So she technically killed herself to become a ghost for two minutes. And she did this willingly and stupidly. That was one of the stupidest things I, uh, stupidest decision that this movie has ever made. I know that sometimes people do stupid things, but that was beyond stupid, especially for a character who you build up as a genius. And yeah, the movie wanted to say that this character, the lesson that they wanted to make is that this character can make mistakes. But you know what? This mistake didn't have a big payoff. Uh, and, and, but guess what? When she turns into a ghost, apparently that's what the main gut bad guy needed, you know, to upset her, say the incantation, and, 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 break, the, uh, and break his from his prison. Uh, it's almost like you didn't need a Phoebe character. For, uh, uh, why? She was a medium? Never established that. So, uh, because she was the special. Uh, it's Jesus that. The more I, I don't want to be that kind of guy, but the more I think about the inconsistencies that this movie has, it, it, it again, it doesn't make me mad. I, it, I, it get, I get annoyed. And by the way, do you notice know that all those themes is all Phoebe? Because Phoebe is everything. The, Lord, that the other character doesn't have too much of an arc. The only one that they kind of got is kind of like the original cast, and which kind of debating, like saying that they 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 need to be in the golden years, and and this is why this movie is pure nostalgia. So much that they even reused the library. Uh, yeah, the library's there, and we got the cameo of the librarian ghost. I don't know how the librarian ghost is still there. Wasn't she supposed to be contained? She was contained in the in the video game. So much for uh, so much to, uh, to acknowledge some of his works. Video games are now kind of part of the culture that uh, that you know what I'll I'll leave it at that. It's so it's so yeah nostalgia bait uh, nostalgia bait, and also they wanted to build a story arc that was pretty much undercooked. In which remember that I say that Kumail Nanjiani, the uh, comic relief, they wanted to build him something like that. Well, here's the thing. Apparently, this guy in his studio apartment, he he got a room full of that it looks well lavish, full of brass of uh, of uh, uh, brass metal. In which this is where he ha he found the whole thing. Apparently, uh, without knowing, he had he found this room. He found this room in his small apartment. All that I don't know how, either him. Or anyone else. <laughs> I don't know how the tenant doesn't didn't know that uh, that there was a secret a uh, room in which it looked like a shrine, in, uh, in which it had this mystical item. It it was just there, and it and it, 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 where they kept the you know the bad guys' horns and and, and the ball because the grandmother the, the, the that coming release grandmother had it. It was surreal when it appeared. It's almost like if, if it's almost it's like in my studio apartment, I had a door that leads to uh, to the Indiana Jones uh, chamber where they, they kept the Holy Grail. Uh, uh, that was surreal. And and they kind of explained that with the whole lore of the of of the big bad guy, that uh, he was detained by. Uh, by these people who are known as the fire masters, people uh, in which, of course, you have to combat ice with fire, and these fire masters they have the power to control fire, almost like almost like a firebender from the last Airbender, and and the grandmother apparently it is of, of this comic relief, is got uh, it has some natural how can I say natural possession? Uh, no, no, he has kind of like this innate power, so they wanted to to, to train this guy. To, to control, uh, to 
control fire so he can you know uh, to fight the, the, the to fight them uh the big bad guy uh, and and it gets so undercooked that the training feels kind of like awkward even in some moments but there's also a bullshit moment during the climax in which in which uh, 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 the possessor uh, uh, takes over uh, one of the uh, uh, what was the one of the proton packs, and it shoots and it shoots uh, the proton blast to uh, to uh, to Finn Wolfhard. But then, out of nowhere, apparently the the, the Nadim character he had he managed to he kind of managed to master the whole firebending powers to control the proton blast. The proton stream is controlled by someone who uses fire firebending skills. I have a question for that. Is the proton blast fire? It doesn't look like fire, so how the hell did he do that? It, it feels more like electricity or plasma, but fire? I don't see a scientific, I don't see a scientific reason for that. How the hell did he do that? Fire power? It's not like he. I don't. I don't. I. I don't know. It's not fire. I mean, at least in the last Airbender, I can buy uh, that they can that firebenders can control electricity. Uh, uh, although that's kind of like a different element, its own stuff, and they build it something like that. But I don't know. It it just boggles how he do that. And of course, then uh, you know we got the climax that I already got to. And by the way, it, it, again, you, you realize the theme. Uh, most of the theme is rely on Phoebe. Uh, she even get you know get with the talk. She's the, uh, Phoebe also is the only one who kind of makes a proton uh, proton pack uh, 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 made of brass metal in order to combat the whole whole monster. And uh, and of course we got the fire bandit scenes. Uh, Melody always ha kind of have the uh, have the checkknife gun in which she's always holding. Uh, 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 she's only holding uh, kind of like a pack of, of, of matches and just one of them. Uh, and it was just used, you know, as a, as, as, as a chapnut gun. Uh, of course, they is... Okay, they is safe. The, then, of course, people surviving who survive. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to say that the ghost tried to, to try to get to the con to the containment unit in order to release uh, more ghosts and all this stuff. Although it didn't, I I, I, I kind of get boggled with that. And it, it, it kind of, and then of course, uh, everyone's happy. Walter Peck tries to you know uh, you know close the Ghostbuster, but everyone is like, oh no no no, everything fine. Phoebe is was the genius. She was the hero and all this stuff because yeah, oh yeah yeah. Phoebe is the hero and all this stuff. Uh, let alone the other guys. Everything, the world's around on Phoebe. Phoebe this, Phoebe that, Phoebe a lot of. Okay, maybe I was I'm going a little bit too harsh on Phoebe. But, but I did mention. It doesn't feel. It feels like she. It, she's kind of became the center of the whole of the universe. When I uh, Ghostbusters uh, for a show called Ghostbusters, I think they, it could have worked better if she if there was kind of like a team unity. And th I didn't feel that, that there was kind of like a team a team effort on that one, except for uh, except for the moment that they try. And and with too many Ghostbusters and you know in the same set and all this stuff, it didn't. Uh, it it didn't feel kind of like the focus in, in, in this one, uh, and again I'm not mad, I'm not angry, I'm just annoyed, just kind of like annoyed that annoyed that that it, that it has some great idea on paper, but it it's it, the execution it wasn't technically there. I'm I'm just I'm just kind of like annoyed that this is kind of like a result of that, but overall. 
it wasn't a terrible movie. Uh, it wasn't, I, I can't say that it was bad. I will say that it was mostly middle of the road. Uh, if I'm being generous, it was, uh, it was below average or average at best. Uh, Ghostbuster fans will eat it up and, and they'll be glad with, you know, with the whole nostalgia, nostalgia baiting. It, uh, but like I said, the bit, the work, the bad things that this movie has is the the inconsistencies and the over reliance of the of of nostalgia. And well, and well, uh, the, a little bit to try hard on on being the Phoebe Spangler movie. And it, 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 may, uh, who knows? Maybe that was that is gonna be the third Ghostbuster movie. And they're not. It's not gonna go, call. It's not gonna be named Ghostbuster. It's gonna call Phoebe. The, the Phoebe movie. Uh, I think that's what they're kind of pushing through. Uh, through. Uh, not trying to be mean spirited with the whole girl. With the girl. I know the actress is doing is doing fine. Um, I've seen worse cases, but it's just kind of like a mild annoyance that I have. So that's all I have to say. I'm sorry that I gave the, the, this cold shoulder of my honest thoughts about this movie. No pun intended.